Hey everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to our roguelike tutorial. Today we are going to be doing, we are going to completing our message system. We last time around we kind of like rushed through this a little bit, but we created like this little function that draws boxes on the screen and puts some text on the screen. I have to apologize a little bit because this is the moment where I'm really like copying a lot of stuff from my prototype because this is stuff, UI stuff is always something that takes a lot of time. You have to add kind of like slowly work your ways towards, for example, doing something like this, you know, all those rect fills to create like a really nice outline and figuring out what exactly, you know, when, where exactly you start drawing the text, figuring out, you know, where the text should appear in relation to the rest of the box. That takes just time. You kind of like have to like hack in those numbers, p p try some numbers and try some other numbers and see how it looks. So that's where I'm going. I am going to actually do the thing where I'm going to actually look at, you know, what what I coded before. So, you know, I don't lose my mind trying to um, trying to do this over and over again. But yeah, just keep in mind that if you ever attempt something yourself, this will be slower and more tedious. People are generally very unhappy coding UI and, you know, I, I get it. You know, it's a bit of a grind, but you kind of have to also find the fun in it. You know, it's kind of like we, had like we have like a little pretty text box. That's also cool. That's, that's also nice. Here's the problem with this text box. I like it. I like it. But if we appear, make this text box appear, it's, it stays there, <laughs> right? So we can now make this text box appear when... Um, Right, we can let's make it appear when we when we interact with the stone tablet, right? Um, so we're gonna go gameplay, right? And um, do we actually check for the stone tablet? Um, what? And there we go. Chest door. No, we don't. So we're gonna go else if else if T L E, and then we we'll want to read the text on a stone tablet. By the way, if you do this yourself and you want to make like a you know RPG, this doesn't have to be stone. This could be an NPC that you talk with, right? So it's like zero zero six, right? Uh, it's six. Then, and this is going to be where we're going to show a stone tablet. Now here, by the way, here you would also, if there's like multiple stone tablets, here you actually want to want to make sure that you know a different message is on a different stone tablet. We might I might show it off real quick later on to um, kind of exemplify. But for now, just we're going to just actually make the message appear. Okay, so welcome to the world of pork like. Like a nice little message. There's some bit of a problem here. M set dest x what? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Double equals sign. See, I make those mistakes myself. Um, we want to make. We want to write here the stone tablet. Okay, so, bam, the message appears. That's good. But now I want it to disappear. <laughs> And there's like, I think two uh, important ways of doing this. I think both are like very important systems that I think we should implement. One system is to make the messages just appear after a certain amount of time. That's a good idea. Why not? Yeah, sure. Make them disappear after a certain amount of time. Um, that's I think important for <clears throat> messages like during gameplay where, you know, oh, the thing happened and then, you know, it disappears again. Um, like something that is like, Unconsequential that you don't have to actually react to, don't have to, you don't have to make the player acknowledge it, and something else maybe short, so that you can like reasonably expect the player to read it short. Not exactly in this kind of situation. It would be something like you know, maybe you've been cursed or something, or maybe you um, you've been healed or something. You know, oh healed, you know. Um, the different the different kind of text boxes would be something like okay here you're talking to a to a character and you actually want you know you want the player to give you give want to give the time, player time to actually read through the text box uh, and again that would be like reading a stone tablet with some lore or talking to an NPC and an NPC has their backstory their tragic backstory that they explain to you yeah so these are like two different cases and we want to actually today we want to implement both cases. Let us do the thing where the box disappears after a certain amount of time. I like this, this idea. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go to the UI tab and we're gonna give our text box a new, we wanna, we wanna wrap our, our text box thing. We're gonna give the, give the text box a new ability and I'm gonna wrap this in a different kind of function. Let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna go a function and we're gonna go show a message. This is gonna be a message. We, that's how we're gonna call a text box that disappears after a certain amount of time. And it will receive a text and there's gonna be a duration. A duration in frames, how many frames this text box should appear. And that will just like add its own window and you know it won't care about about anything else it will like like take care of a lot of stuff notice the things that we don't have to specify when we show a message we don't have to specify where exactly this box appears on a screen uh, another thing that you also want, don't want <clears throat> don't have to specify is <clears throat> We just want to like have a text. We don't have like we don't have multiple lines. This should be like a short one-line message. I think, you know, you died. <laughs> Maybe not you died. Maybe that's a, that requires more and more explanation. But like a little box, you know. Um, what is a good example? Where's this thing where you found a box? Um, oh, that's a good idea. You want to open a chest and there's an item inside and it tells you found this item or inventory full, you know, something like a little message that disappears real quick. Okay, so for those messages, we're not gonna actually take advantage of the multiple line system, we just wanna show one line. Mm -hmm. And this also is a situation where we're gonna actually apply, um, wanna give this window a, a, um, a, a timer, a new property. Um, so we're gonna go like local, w equals edwin so we're going to add some window we're going to fill in the values here later on but for now we're just going to type in and then by the way this is going to be just like an array with this text again one line just one line and where exactly it shows up and the width and height that's something you're going to figure out it's going to be the difficult part of this <laughs> and then after we create this window we're going to store the result you know this window landed in our array but still still we want to keep on manipulating it uh, so we saved it in our local variable w here and we're going to give it uh, a new property called, I'm going to call it die. And we're going to call it, or we could also call it duration. Yeah, let's call it duration. Let's call it dur. Let's call it duration. <clears throat> There's one more thing that I want to deal with. Uh, I want to actually, I want to have this duration. Is that a good idea? No, it's great. It's fine. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So now I want to figure out <clears throat> the width and height of the window, like how big should be this window be to show this text. So again, if I go here, um, if I go to the gameplay stuff, we have like this multiple line kind of text, but this time I'm gonna actually keep using this new function that we have show message, uh, hello world. So we're just gonna go hello world. And the duration is gonna be 120 frames. I'm gonna show hello world for 120 frames. This is how we're gonna, how we want to show messages for the player. This is the this is a very neat, very easy way of, of doing UI stuff. So now for, um, the next thing we're going to do is gonna gonna have to <clears throat> think of how we're gonna calculate the width of the window required to fit in the text, and that's you know typical UI work. I hate it, but you know you have to do it. So we're gonna create a new variable that's gonna store the width, and we're gonna plug this variable into the width. So the variable is going to be, and I'm, again, <clears throat> I'm using because I figured it out once before, so I, we don't have to <clears throat> think about this. Let's do something like the width of the text. So this hashtag thing can be used to, to count how many elements there are in an array, but it can also be used to measure the length of a string. So hashtag txt, when, this, when txt is a string, gives you the amount of characters you have in a string. That's good. And we're going to multiply it by four because each um, letter in uh, in Pico 8 in this this font is four uh, pixels in width. It's three pixels for the actual letter, but then there's another pixel for spacing between the letters. So it's four pixels per character. We need four pixels pixels per character. And then um, we're going to add something like six to uh, to account for the edges of the of the text box. I think six is um, is, some, is a number that that is that is good. Now we calculate the width in advance because 
we want um, the text the text box to be centered in, on the screen and we so in order to find out where the left oh, wait a minute so we want uh, it to be centered. In order to find where the left edge of this of the back box is, we kind of want to want to know how big it is. Because depending if it's bigger, then you see the this left edge will be is moving, right? Depending on the width. So we kind of also want to uh, want to calculate the width of the text box before we can calculate its left edge. And so the left edge is going to be uh, six three minus width divided by two, because it's the other. Part of the width is is to the right of the center of the screen. The center of the screen is at 63. This is 63. Half of the width is here. Half of the width is there. I hope that's correct. <laughs> that's understandable. It's again, it's UI programming. And then you know how far on the screen it show, show up. I I came up with 50. I think that was a good number. That's it. Uh, this duration, this box, this box won't disappear now. That's something that we're going to have to deal with. Also, this whole this thing doesn't work. Why? The rect fill is bad. It doesn't like the rect fill. And there's something that we that we didn't do. We added the window. We that's good. Oh, we forgot about the height. About the height of the thing. Uh, again, I'm gonna figure out. Yeah, so it's a uh, 13 was a good height. That's kind of like uh, six six pixels for the height of the text by itself and then you know some additional for some uh, for the for the frame around the, the the text it didn't work okay so i guess we need to add plus seven now it worked So now this, this message shows up and I want now this message to disappear after duration is over. So we're gonna go to the draw draw window function here. Now here's a bit of a, I'm gonna, we're gonna do something, that's gonna be a bit, bit of a hack because we're gonna actually um, make the, make something that would be usually something that you would put in an update function, but we're going to put it in draw function. You know, this is the, fun the, the function that is responsible for drawing. But here we're also going to count how many time, how many um, uh, frames this box has been uh, visible on the screen. And if it's, you know, if it's um, past its due date, we will remove it again. So we're going to do something like this. If W duration, uh, is uh, is not nil, then you know d d this window that we're talking about has an expiry da uh, expiration date. It is supposed to be on the screen for a certain amount of time. So we're gonna go w dir uh, minus equals one. We're gonna just remove one. And if w dir dir equals zero, or if it's smaller equals zero, then does that actually cost more token? No, it doesn't. Then, in this case, we're gonna go. We're gonna delete this window from our window <coughs> array. Delete this window that we're talking about from the window array. I do it at the end of this loop because you know after we deleted it, we don't want to like modify it anymore. So let's try this. It works. Perfect. There is a bit of a little detail that I want to be adding here, and it's like, I think it's, it's worth it. Some people might disagree, but I, I like it. Um, we're wasting some tokens for this, but I like this little graphical effect when a window closes that it kind of like, whoop, kind of like, whew, goes, goes smaller. I like it. It's good. We should, you, know, you, should, you should have some fun with those windows. So yeah, let's, let's make that little animation where, it, where it's a, a slap, a snaps shot. Okay, this, here's how we're going to do this. I have to like always check a little bit with my with my other code that I already written because how did I did it before? I have to like this is again UI programming. So if the duration has run out, if it's um, if it's uh, if it's smaller than zero, yeah, then we're gonna go like <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna go lo local. No, actually we're gonna go yeah. www. That's hit. And that's um, that's no height. We're gonna make the box go like this together. You could also go like this together 
or like this. Um, I th this is, I think, better. This makes kind of like more sense to me. This kind of like a parchment that you can unroll. Um, so we're going to use this double w, double w, w, so window width, a local variable that we defined up there. And we're going to go like, okay, this is going to be <clears throat> window dot width. Yeah, no, w, w, we can keep it around actually, um, divided by four. Something like this. So it kind of like moves fast at the beginning and it kind of like eases into or right, it, it moves fast at the beginning and eases into it. Uh, I'm doing it like this because sometimes we have like big windows and we always wanted the window to close in the same amount of time. And then we can go like w dot um, height equals w. You can like, okay, we divide it by four and like write it back into our window. Now there is one one of an issue here as is we're gonna show it in a second here. Uh, and then we're gonna go if w, w is smaller than uh, one, then then we're gonna delete it. We're gonna wait until the window actually closes as actually small enough on the, on the screen and then we're gonna close it. We're gonna remove it from the uh, from our array. Let's try this. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Why didn't it work though? Oh, because I'm a dummy. I'm I'm talking about the width, but I should be talking about the height. Hmm. It's still there. Oh, right. Like this. Okay, now it snaps shut. It's a bit fast. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna actually do this a little differently. We're gonna actually, um, we're gonna create a new variable. It's called gonna, gonna be diff. It's kind of like the difference of how much we're gonna change it. And we're gonna go, um, we're gonna actually subtract the diff from this. So we're not actually dividing it, but we're actually removing a little bit. Now it's super fast. Oh no, it's not minus width. It's minus equals width, like this. Now it looks nice. It kind of looks weird that it kind of goes outside of the screen. That's weird. I'm not sure why it does that. Let me create a, like a really big, like a really big window so we can see. Now we are like debugging stuff. Now, now this is not the original. This is the authentic tutorial. Now we, we something is not working quite right, and we have to kind of figure out what the problem is. I'm gonna create instead of the 13. I'm gonna. Remember that it was 13 previously. Uh, I'm gonna make a, a bigger box, like 32 or something. So you see, it's getting smaller, but then it kind of like gets into negative. It's get, kind of like overshoots and then gets gets negative. I'm not sure why it does that. Does this have to do? Let's instead of the wh, let's just do w dot h. Is that is that better? Is that why? Because we are like. Yeah, I think it's like this, right? Is it, uh, huh, it overshoots. Uh, what happens if we actually draw a small box on the screen? What happens if our width, our height is actually one? <laughs> I want to see what that looks like. Ah, mm, I got it. So this is actually, this is to some extent correct behavior. <laughs> um, because when the box gets too small, um, it kind of like the, the inside of the box is being drawn outside of the box, so to speak. Um, I don't know if there is a good way of solving this. Yeah, because like the inside of the box is getting kind of like being turned inside out. Uh, one way of solving this maybe is gonna be, hmm, <laughs> It's kind of funny that I didn't, uh, maybe I didn't uh, pay attention last time around I programmed this. So one thing I, uh, one, re one way of I, how are you gonna solve this is I'm gonna be, I'm gonna sanitize this input here. I'm gonna be, <laughs> what, are, what is he talking about? Uh, I'm going to um, um, make sure that W minus one is never lower than, uh, than zero. So it's gonna go max. Uh, w minus one zero and max height minus one zero and again using this max function to make sure that um, 
then and then this number never drops below a certain value. Uh, in our cases, we, when we're drawing a box, we never want to draw a box of negative height. We always want to draw a box of at least zero height and not negative one height. Because if you got negative height, then you will get a bigger box. You know, it, it will go down to zero and then we'll start stretching out again. And that costs, that causes like this weird. So now you see it kind of like looks looks more more correct. Still not sure why it the right edge looks so odd, but I guess it's like aligns exactly with the <clears throat> with the with the tiles. Oh, it might be also uh, the clipping might also work weirdly here because we div um, <clears throat> subtract eight from the clip. So maybe you want to go here. Um, Yeah, see, here's a bit of a weird thing with Pico 8, where it's like the clip, the clip it is works differently than the rect fill, the original rect fill. With the rect fill, you have x and y for the left edge of for the left edge of the box, and x2 and y2 for the right bottom edge of the box. So you have like two corners and it draws the box between two corners. But when you use a clip function, it's actually x, y, and width and height. So it's kind of like inconsistent the way you define boxes in PQ8. That's something that I don't like. Um, so something we might do here is, can we use the same function here, max? Max. To make it appear nicer. No, that, 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 that didn't really help. Okay, whatever. You know, sometimes you have to like, that's the best we can do. It's it's a silly looking box either way. I just want to see if the animation of it uh, shutting together uh, close actually looks better now. Uh, so let me see if gameplay draws um, UI. <clears throat> I'm going to create a bigger box again. Yeah, that looks better. The very last um, sprite, uh, the very very last um, frames look a bit odd. Something we can do uh, to, to make this look a bit nicer is we can make the box disappear before it looks odd. So we're gonna go like, if it's smaller than uh, like three, you can just make it disappear. Yeah, and that's a little bit better. Now here, something is that is a bit b silly is that the, the top edge of the box stays and the bottom like 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 drives the bottom edge into into you know it's kind of like it shuts down like it just rolls up. But I actually want want to I actually want to have like top edge of the box and the bottom edge of the box like meet each other at the center. <clears throat> so the way we do this is we're gonna actually reposition the box. We're gonna go uh, w y plus equals diff divided by two. Diff in our cases, like I use, you, you, I use like this little helper variable diff, is basically how much we're closing the box in this frame. So we're always closing the box of, um, you know, we could use one in this case. And you would see that the box would like come together very close, uh, very slowly. But um, we use uh, the height divided by four um, because if you have like a big box, you we want it to go shut, snap shut as, as fast as a small box. And you can um, change the speed at which a box is, is shutting down by um, dividing by the different amount. So dividing by, by eight may, makes the animation more smooth and maybe more fun, but I, I think four is good. I think you don't wanna, this is an animation that doesn't want to overstay its welcome. It's fine if it just shuts down a little bit. <sighs> There was a lot of things happening in this <laughs> with this little thing. Yeah, there's a lot of pitfalls here that I, I um, that I didn't realize were there here. And these are kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure. Like, it seems like my prototype wasn't as refined as I thought. Okay, so here is, we already have one box finished. That's good. But now uh, we want to have, actually want to have like a bit of a different box here as well. Like this is fine for hello, for these kind of like very short messages. But it's not fine for when we actually, you know, when we're talking to an NPC that has a great amount of text 
and you want to read that text, you know, when you want to get into the lore of this game. This is good for short messages. But now we want to maybe have a message where it's like you have to press a button uh, in order to to um, uh, to confirm that you read all the text. And also, by the way, something that I talked about last time around, the readability of text um, is something that is very subjective and something that's very difficult to to improve. And it has like unintuitive ways in how you in improve readability. Uh, like something that a lot of people go for, like if they never did any design, any kind of layout work, and they're like, oh, this text is very difficult to read. Well, I guess I will just bump up the size of the text because bigger text is easier to read. But that's actually not always the case. And one of the things that makes uh, text a lot more readable is, funny enough, the space around the text. If you have margins, if the text has margins, if it has like air, if it's like in swimming in a in an empty space, that makes it easier to focus on where the text ends and begins. And if the text has very little room to breathe, if the edges of the of there's other elements around the text, that makes it like oh I don't know where it ends. Like you know where it ends, but your eye t needs a little bit more, or your brain needs a little bit more processing power to kind of like figure out where the where the letters are ending or not. And that is something that uh, makes readability legibility of text worse. Long explanation, I want to actually tweak this thing a little bit here and I want to actually always add spacing around the text that you that you write. So I'm going to add like a space in front of the text and I want to also add like a text after uh, space after the text, like a empty empty space. I don't have to add the space after the text or no, I don't have to add it. I just can can be like okay text um plus two, to edit plus two for the length of the text. And you see, you have now more, more room, the text becomes a lot more prominent, a lot more, has more, a lot more impact, is more readable. That's something that's, I think, very important to, to, um, to recognize, to understand. Now again, we, now we go, go back to this moment where we actually want to have a different kind of function that shows us longer messages that we can skip, skip, that we can skip with a button. Okay, so let us try this thing. So what I want to be doing now is I'm going to create a very similar, similar, similar function that allows us to show a big amount of text and that um, kind of like tr sets up the UI so it kind of like waits for a button to get pressed. So in this case, we actually do not care about the duration, but txt, this part, mm, so this uh, is going to be an array of individual lines now and later on we might actually find a different uh, different solution of how we can actually convey a lot of text can split a text into individual uh, you know individual lines but you know for now we're just going to always assume that whenever we talk to somebody whenever there's a big line of text we actually you know have to structure the text we have to do the line breaks manually we have to um, give this function an array of individual strings now this is going to be a lot less of a sophisticated function. Um, it will basically just print a dump text box. That's what I thought, and it's going to be up to you as a as the as the creator. It's going to be up to you to kind of like figure out you know um, how to fit the text in the box. The only thing that that it will um, actually try to figure out is. Um, it will make the height of the box actually high enough to fit the amount of text that you, um, the amount of lines that you came, came up with. So it's going to be something like txt divided by, uh, multiplied by six. That's kind of like the amount of, oops, multiplied by six. So we, because we know like each entry in this text array uh, is one line. And each line requires six pixels, so it's going to be like that's going to be the amount of, of space required for the for the actual text. And then I'm just going to add seven. That's a good number that came up with some some testing to add more space above and below. And then we're just going to give it the text array straight. Now we created this window here, and now it's good idea. And that's why how the reason why we're returning the W always here. Um, when we're creating an, a window, is I want to save this in a global variable that um, that is responsible for storing because we always want to have just like one of those messages on, on the sorry, one of those messages on the screen at the, at the same time. So it's going to be like hmm, 
let's call it like di dialogue or let's call it talk wind the talk window where you talk to people talk wind is going to be nil at the beginning but later on uh, we're going to set it to different things so we're going to go like talk wind equals add wind so and so forth and another thing that you also want to be doing we actually want to have um, this uh, we want to give this this window a property a new property talk wind talk wind equals um, talk wind dot but obviously but equals true that's gonna be like a just like a very simple property that takes that um, um, we're gonna do it later on that um, displays like this little message this little icon on the in the edge that maybe blinks um, that you know you have to press a button to make this uh, window go away okay so let us try to actually make this work this should actually already work if we use the gameplay so no longer hello world now it's gonna be now it's gonna be a more sophisticated message <clears throat> Well, well, welcome to the world of, welcome to uh, pork, pork-like, pork-like. And then, for example, we can also give like a empty line here and it's like, um, climb the tower to obtain the golden kielbasa so you see i'm giving it an array and it's separated by you know it's string separated by commas and each um string in this array is going to be its own individual line like so now we, we can like tweak this a little bit and to make sure you know that the individual <clears throat> that the individual uh, lines actually like go all the way to the edges of the of the box and we no longer have like the the, uh, the margin so maybe we're gonna have, want to tweak this a little bit but you know it's fine enough now just what i want to do is like i want to have a situation where i can press the button to make this text disappear right okay so we're gonna go to the update function and here in update game that's where we that's where we're doing this you know you want to be able to interact with it it's we're not going to be doing like very complicated stuff we don't want to be like talking to the characters while animations are playing so we're just going to do this like okay if how do we do we call this if talk wind if the talk window is not equals nil then that means there's a talking window on the screen and now we actually want to sidestep the buffer but because what happens if you know we mashed a bunch of buttons we ran into an npc the npc pops up a text box and it's like oh but already pressed you know enter at this point and then the window will pop up and disappear immediately you don't want to do that you want to actually now check not not you don't want to check the buffer you actually want to see if currently now uh, a button was pressed and we have this we have get but right so we're gonna go here if get but and now um we're gonna make it so that you actually have to press a special specific button i think x is good x is like a good confirm button so we're gonna go get but equals fin uh, equals five then and then we're gonna go talk wind and now we have like a, already a good way of making windows disappear we're gonna go talk wind dot um dot die or dot dir equals zero we set the duration of this window to zero so it kind of like shuts down by itself and then we're gonna go talk wind equals nil now this might be a bit weird but you have to remember like the variables and objects exist independently of each other variables can be in different places uh, objects can be can be in um, referenced by different variables at the same time in our case this this window that we have this talk wind that's being referenced by the variable talk wind but also the same window is also in the array of windows at the same time it's like you can access the same window through different ways and all that we do when we do talk wind equals nil is we make sure that this variable no longer points at the window it just points into nothingness into nil now the window still exists we haven't deleted the window the window is still there in our in this case it's still there in our lists of windows and it's still being drawn to the screen and stuff like that we just no longer have access to this window through this means and this is really great because now the next frame you know we the game will be okay there is no message on the screen uh, currently and we can like um, um, 
we can get on with the game. Now let's see if this works. It works. <laughs> oh, there's a bit of a problem. I can still walk around while talking to people. <laughs> That's kind of like, uh, like it's kind of like uh, demon souls. So we have to do an else here. Now I cannot walk in. So this is almost done. There's one last thing I want to add. I want to add a button and it should like, I want to also have like an animation, maybe not blinking, maybe like a like an actual image of a button that goes up and down that is being pressed. I think there's a really cool solution for this, but for that, I will have to add, and I'm sorry, this is bad, I know, but UI is the kind of stuff that kind of takes a lot of time and like reinventing the wheel is not something that, not the reason why you're here. Uh, I'm gonna create a new tool function that I like to have. That I always copy from other projects as well. I never do it from, from scratch. <clears throat> I call this function oprint8. What that prints text in a very special way. Oh, so by the way, I have to, we have to tweak some things. So oprint means outline print. It prints a text with an outline. And oprint8 in this case, it means it prints a text in a very, very thick outline. Uh, let me explain you real quick what, what, what this is all about. So if you want to print text with an outline, what is a good way to print an outline around you know, the individual letters of the text? That seems like very complicated, but it's actually not. What you have to do is you, <laughs> I mean, it's a bit of a wasteful way of doing this, but it's kind of like a very common uh, procedure. You print uh, first the outline of the text, and then you print kind of like the text, um, the actual text you want to print on top of it. And you print the outline by taking the same text and just like moving it one pixel and printing it, and then moving it one pixel in the other direction, printing it, and up and down and so forth, like moving it a little bit around, just wiggling it around, and always printing it with, with the outline color. That gives you like just the outline of the text filled in, and then you can fill the actual fill of the text on top of it in the center. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually using an array here that has like, you know, the movements in all directions and or cardinal directions and diagonals. So that's a total of eight directions in which we're moving the text left, right, up, down, diagonally, 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 diagonally. We kind of like move, move this text around. And so I go through this array and always add, you know, the, in, the content of an array to the X and Y position. And then I have this function except C and C2. C2 is the outline color and C is the actual text color. And then once I'm done printing the outline, I print the actual text in here. This little, this little, this little dude here, this little array, something that you might be familiar with. We kind of have this array already. The only problem is that the array we're currently using is only using the four cardinal directions. And this is like eight cardinal directions, right? Is it cardinal direction if it's eight? <laughs> so it's like more direction that we already have. It's also diagonals. And this little list doesn't contain the diagonals. But we can just expand this array to also include the diagonals. We know we always go from one, when we're looping through the array, we're always going from one to four. But if you ever want to include the diagonals, we can just expand this, this array to also give us access to diagonal directions. So <clears throat> in this case, going to be one, one, four, uh, upper left, lower left, lower right. No, is it right? No, wait a minute, that's all wrong because it's all mirrored. Okay, never mind. So, so first we want to go upper right, lower right, lower left, upper upper left. So kind of like in clockwork fashion. So uh, one one. Um, minus one, minus one for the X. And then here is gonna be minus one because go up. We're gonna then we go down. Then we go down and then we go up. So now this little array gives us um, ability to kind of like um, check diagonals. It's gonna be also useful later on for, late, uh, for level generation. And so together with, <clears throat> with this tool, we can print an outline. Why? Why do I even bother? Well, let me show you real quick. There's a cool trick that we can do here. When we're drawing the window, we can go something like if um, w, I, I think I called but, then 
let's put it on top before we delete the uh, the uh, before we potentially maybe delete things from from the array. So if if our window has a button associated with it, uh, the but uh, did it call it but? Just making sure that we call it but. Of course we call it but. We always call it but. Here's an interesting thing. So this property doesn't exist until we set it, right? So usually, and in most cases, we're going to ask, you know, does this um, object have the but property? It's not going to be false because it doesn't exist. It's going to be nil. But if you ask for something like this, if you go like if w but, uh, then um, if it's nil, then it will be kind of like equivalent to false. That's kind of like a good way of, of dealing with with um, with properties that may, may, may or may not be set to things, to values. So if we have a but, we are supposed to be printing a but. I'm going to print the but. I'm going to print this. So Shift X gives you like this little image of the X button. That's kind of like very nice. <clears throat> now we have to kind of figure out where to print it. Um, let's go like W w x plus w width minus 11 is what i figure out that was the that was that was my thing that i figured out last time around and w y um plus w height minus three and then the color is going to be six It did not work. Six and a half hours later. Oh my gosh, I forgot something very important. So you remember where we set a clipping region for the window? You remember that? You remember, right? Uh, you have to turn it off again. <laughs> so the clipping restricts the drawing. Um, all the drawing that happens but you know after you're done you have to like run the clip function again with without anything like without any arguments to reset it so it's back to uh, to you're uh, back to be able to draw anywhere in the screen and this is indeed the problem that we had here where we the button wasn't showing up because uh, you know the clipping region was restricted to within the box so we cannot draw this and uh, this this button thing outside of the box so um, uh, let me let me try this again. Let's try this again. Does that does, does that work? No, that's way down there. That's 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 too too far. So we're gonna go w y y here. That's better. Uh, and again, this is now the problem where we're gonna start like really tweaking things. Okay, uh, I don't like the 11 here. I'm not sure why the 11 is is so bad. So let's. I guess our this function now works differently. We are we are we are um, the draw function that we're having right now is, is a diff different than the one I had in my prototype. So we have to kind of figure out the spacing. So this looks good, and then maybe minus one. Yeah, something like this. So now you see the problem that the reason why I have like this outline thing where we're drawing the the character, this the emoji of the X button, but it kind of like it's it's it doesn't it's it's merges with the with the outline of our box. And so if we use our function outline print eight, and we make a black outline around this, it will look nice. And also we might use the outline print somewhere else. Okay, so we have now the button, but I think it's important in this, these kinds of cases to um, to communicate to the player. I just noticed something. I'm sorry, I'm being distracted. I think we have to move this. No, we don't have to, it's fine. Uh, it's important to make sure that the player pays attention as to what he, they're supposed to be doing. And if I look at this, my attention is kind of drawn to my character because he's moving. Or maybe to the different like colorful things on the screen. And not necessarily to the fact that I have to press a button. So I might be missing the fact that I have to press a button. Generally, when you have something that's moving on the screen, it's a good way to draw the player's attention to it. To kind of like make sure that the attention is where it's supposed to be. 
Um, that's kind of like something that a lot of like beginning game designers or, or UI designers are getting wrong. We're trying to make things and you know all the things are happening on the screen at the same time and then the players are just like, ah, I'm not sure what's happening. I think I, we had like this in a previous student's game that I reviewed um, where um, there was like a lot of things happening on the screen and there's like animations and messages popping up and it's like you were overwhelmed by this. And not necessarily in a, oh, that's a cool challenge kind of way, but in a more like, ah, I don't know what's happening kind of way. So anyways, a long, long discussion, but um, yeah, so we want to animate this button. And it's like this kind, of, this kind of situation where it's like, oh, animating a button, oh man. Oh yeah, that's how difficult that is, is that. But there's a cool hack. You're here for the cool hacks, right? So we're gonna go like plus. In the, when we're talking about the Y position of the button, we want, to, we want it to move up and down. That's what, what we want. We wanna add sinus. And then we're gonna use um, sinus as a function that goes from, that's kind of like a wave function that goes between minus one and one. So that's what we want. We want like the button to move up and down, minus one, one, minus one, one. Um, but this function requires an angle. And it's usually for angle stuff. And we can just plug in any number that goes up. For example, that um, the time, the time is, um, is, a, is a function that returns how many seconds Pico8 has been running. And it starts at one and it has like a comma value. So every second is, is it adds one to it. So it's one, two, three, you know, like a second. And, and it has like comma value. So it's 1.5 after 1.5 seconds. And this is really great to plug into a sign function. So we can like animate stuff real, real, real very easily. We're done here, ladies and gentlemen. We're done. That's good, right? So now we have like this button, like urging us to, to press a button here and we press it. There's a one, there's one issue here. When it closes, I don't want this to be shown when it closes. So what we can do here, we're going to take it out. And it's like, if we are, if we're closing stuff, then uh, otherwise we're not closing stuff, then, um, then show this button. So now it disappears when when it's closing. There's a bit of there's a bit of an issue. It's if our if our window is has like an expire expiration date like 120 and it's like ticking down, it's being shown for a couple of seconds. Then you can't show the actual X button here. But I think in this case that's fine. That's absolutely okay. Okay, so. Um, this has been very long, but just like in case, just like to give you like the tools that you need in order to create your RPG experience, because you know, you don't have to do the rock, like you have to, can have like a, you know, handcrafted RPG experience as well. Lots of people are using stuff like Bitsy to kind of have like, you know, different things that you can interact with people to talk to. So just, just, just so you have that, I will spawn a second thing over here um, and a thing over here. So we have like different messages right, Dif different stone blocks. And we want to maybe show different message on the, on the different stone blocks. How do we do that? Well, I mean, it's a bit of a hack. It's not great, it's, but you know, if you're doing like this kind of like simple bitsy game, that, that's, that's enough for you, that's all you need. So we're just gonna do like, <clears throat> we're gonna f check where this is. If dest x equals something and, and dest, y equals something then show this else if the destination is different then show something else and if it's different then show something else. so like in this statement and i told you again like if you had like a lot of those messages it might might be worthwhile putting them in an array but i'm going to leave it up to you i mean actually in our rock like we're not going to have that many of those messages but if you have like an rpg that i would totally do put them into an array so i would have like an array of messages and these uh, messages would have like their own positions on the map um, but in this case it's going to be one message is at two five so that's going to be our starting message two five and then there's going to be a second message at uh, 13.12. And there's going to be a, second message, a third message on 13.6. And then here we can be like, this is the second message message. 
and then here at the end is we're gonna be like you're you're almost there okay oops there's a problem here oh yeah the the infamous <laughs> double equals sign i told you this is a huge problem even if you know about it there's still a problem there's still a um trick bump yeah somewhere in here yeah we didn't close it doing all of the mistakes all of the mistakes so welcome to park like this is the second message and we see okay this is actually a situation where you know we put too much in this one line so it would be up to you to kind of make sure that um that you yeah, so for example this message is fine and anyway, you can modify this system if you really rely on those text messages. You might actually um, make the, the, this text message system a bit more complicated. So maybe show a portrait, maybe of the character you're talking to and stuff like that, or maybe something that you could actually even add a function that takes a big chunk of text and separates it automatically into uh, and breaks the lines automatically. There's functions for that. But um, again, this is not the focus in our rock. Like I want to be able to show some messages that you can like, click away. Maybe, for example, there's going to be a stone tablet that will store the high score, you know, um, somewhere in, in like a like a spawning area. Um, but I my, one of the main reasons why I kind of like implemented like the very simple message system is so that you can decide, you know, what kind of game you want to make. You can make an RPG out of it. You can talk to NPCs like this. Um, this is this is a starting point for you to go on a journey. <clears throat> so if you want to go on this journey, the text of this, um, the code for this, um, this, uh, this episode is going to be down in doobly-doo. And of course, you can always join the Discord to play like the final um, prototype I talked about last time around. And yeah, you can always ask me questions in the comment section and maybe I will be able to, able to answer them. Uh, let's see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.